sing that one more time, Lord, you are welcome. Stand all over the building as we're about to approach the throne of grace. Yes. Invite the presence of the Lord here. Invite his presence. For the anointing of the Lord is in the house. Those who pray can expect a miracle. We are anticipating a mighty move of the power of God. He's in the house right now. He is here right now. For whatever you need, he's in the house right now. Lord, to our welcome in this place everywhere. Let us approach the throne of grace together. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we bow before you right now. Lord, we are petitioning you right now. There are those who are standing here who are in need of a touch from you. Oh, hallelujah, there are those who are standing here. Oh, God, we need you to stretch out your hand today. Oh, God, touch somebody right now. We only ask you, Lord, we only petition you because we know you're evil. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Father, you are able, heal today, Lord. Set somebody free, Jesus. Oh, God, set somebody free from the chains of the enemy, Lord. Set somebody free from depression, Jesus. Set somebody free from whatever's going wrong in their life. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, feel this house with your presence. Feel this house with your presence, Lord. Oh, God, let us feel you in a mighty way, Jesus. Don't let us leave here the same way we came. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, let us walk out of here with victory. Let us walk out of here with a fresh anointing. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, somebody might be listening right now. Oh, God, stretch out your hand upon their lives. Oh, God, they might be sitting in the living room. Oh, God, I pray that you would meet them right there, where they are, Lord. Let them pray miracles in their lives right now. In the name I speak healing in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. And it is so. And it is so. And it is so. Somebody clap your hands like you believe. It's already done in the name of Jesus. I need somebody to clap your hands like you receive it. Somebody clap your hands like you receive it right now. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, 
the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lift up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy faith, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Not those saints, somebody get down at 30 seconds.
Praise the Lord, everyone, in the matchless name of Lord Jesus Christ. It is so wonderful that we can come together once again and uh, talk about how good God is and what he is calling us to do and to tell the world that he is. And uh, there is no greater God than our God, our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm so thankful that the Lord bless us to come together on social media. Since we have not been going into our sanctuaries that as we once did, but the Lord is blessing us just the same and uh, blessing us more in different ways. And I do believe the Lord is in charge of his universe and whatever happens he can allow it or disallow it so what is going on now is something of which he allows but he can stop it at any time he is the awesome sovereign god 
So thank God for us knowing that. So we can give him praise at any time, wherever and whenever we wish to because he is in charge and we thank him for it. So let us today talk about something of which is so important that, um, of course, all of God's word is important, uh, but it seemed to continue to promote the, the fact that we are the Lord's second self and that he is preparing us for rapture. Um, he has ascended back to heaven, as he said to his father in St. John 17, 5, that, Father, I've done the works that you've told me to do, and uh, now give me back the glory that I had with you before the world was. So the Lord ascended back. Now, of course, the development and the perfecting of the saints of the church is still in the process. And I refer to him, I refer to it as his second self because the church is who he is. So let us go to the book of Ephesians, the 11th chapter, and this is where you want to kind of spend a few minutes. Um, Ephesians 4 and 11, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What a powerful scripture. What is it saying? What is required of us? what he is calling us to. May we get a glimpse in, in spirit and in heart of the fact that God has put in place a mechanism to bring to pass what he died for, what he rose for, what he ascended back to glory for. He is now giving us whatever is needed to f fulfill his purpose. What a blessing it is, saints of God, that God is doing this for us. He is, he is blessing us, and uh, there ought to be some excitement in us and that the Lord is doing this through us it could have been somebody else he could have chosen somebody else but he has chosen you and me and he might perfect us he might bless us to be all that he want us to be so again he has given us apostles he's given us evangelists he's given us pastors and teachers and all of this is to keep us focused and to perfect us and to bless us to reach that level of uh, readiness to be raptured. The thought I'd like for us to use today is the fullness of Christ, the fullness of Christ. Verse 12 says, for the perfecting of the saints. 
this is what is in process now. This is what is going on now. And I hope that we feel this and understand this, that we can give full attention to the preaching of the gospel and studying of the word of God and, and giving our hearts to it, not just our ears, but our hearts to it. This is after the Lord has filled us with his own self, and given us his spirit so that we can have his presence at all time that we may achieve and succeed because he is omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. And he is in you and in me. And he has given us his word through these vessels that we cited. He is perfecting the saints, apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. He is causing it to be. Thank you for blessing us that we didn't have to struggle or try to find a way to become what you want us to be, but you gave us the mechanism. You gave us what is needed to achieve and to become whatever you wanted us to be. And we know that we must be disciples in order to uh, go forward. And a disciple is a follower. A, a, a disciple is one who is being taught. A disciple is what is all of God's people. We are being discipled as we follow on, as we seek to know more about God. This is what it's all about. And I do believe when God finished perfecting, when he finished with the work that he's doing for his church or his second self, he will come back and rapture us out of this world as it is known today. And that last verse, the 13th verse, says, till we all come in the unity of the faith, in, there's only one law, one faith, one baptism. This is what we all must lock into till we come into the unity of the faith. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. This is what we must become. And that's what the Lord is doing through the mechanism he has given us till we all come in the unity of the faith and you know, of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The measure. Only God has the measuring mechanism or the measuring tool to see where we are but he'll have us where we need to be at any given time. If we can begin to appreciate and to give thanks and celebrate God for having chosen us to be his second self, to be 
in the church to be a part of eternal life. We are pressing our way through the challenges that we remain close to Almighty God so that we'll be able to understand our next move because if we're close enough to God, He will keep us on the path that leads to fulfillment and fullness of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has so provided the mechanism to assure this very thing of which we have cited in these verses 11 through 13. The Lord has come into our hearts and our minds to bring this to pass. He has given us prophets, given us apostles and evangelists, pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Ephesians 1 and 8, it is a blessing for us to have the kind of power that is provided for us to represent God in the way that he has chosen for us to do it. Ephesians 1 and 8 says, wherein he has abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. He has put in our understanding, according to the scripture here, the eighth verse says, wherein he has abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. He has abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. It's no longer a mystery. <clears throat> it was until he gave us understanding. So it's no longer a mystery but it is understood what is required of each of his children. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. Isn't it wonderful for us to be bringing pleasure to God by responding to his purpose and his cause in our lives? He wants us to be where our lives will be. Represented of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. 
he wants us to. And even as he taught us to pray, he said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth, as it is in heaven. We are doing heavenly work. In going about the fulfilling God's purpose on earth, the fullness of Christ, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, bringing into the oneness of God. But let's go back to verse 9 before we discuss 10. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. The mystery. Everyone do not have the understanding of God's purpose and God's will. So they are not motivated. They do not have that drive that is so important for us. There ought to be an ongoing and a continuous thanksgiving to the Lord of, of what he has given us. In everything the Lord said to give thanks because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning each of us. So it's a blessing. It's no longer a mystery because he has made known unto us what his will is for us. And then we'll go back to verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. When you talk about gathering together, he is talking about the body of Christ and bringing us to the oneness, to the unity of Christ, the fullness of Christ, the fullness of the stature of his second self. Again, his church. What a blessing it is for us to have, have this kind of calling, making us responsible for achieving the goal, uh, fulfilling his purpose. That should be exciting to us, saints of God. Nothing can be more important than our hearts being locked into his purpose, fulfilling his will. And verse 11 says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. 
we have received God's gift as the body of Christ or as eternal salvation uh, the 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 fullness of Christ as he called us to this is not something of which we merit but it is God's gift to each of us being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. The sovereign God, he worketh all things after his own will. We have something to give thanks to God for. May the Lord bless us to feel it, see it, to accept it, and give, you, give him all the praise and all of the glory. We are blessed. Regardless to what you may be in, experiencing in life, but it all, it, it is all of what God has promised to prepare us to overcome. Um, it's almost as if you're already there because God has given you what it takes and using what comes against you to sharpen your spear and you'll be better after every storm in your life. That's the beauty of God's way of bringing us when the enemy thinks that they have conquered or they will conquer. They are being disappointed on every front. So may the Lord bless us to see it and understand it on that level. And the 12th verse says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ that we should be to the praise of his glory. That's who we are. The praise of his glory. Thank God for him choosing us to be to the praise of his glory. Thank God for selected us. He could have selected someone else, but he picked us up out of the garbage of life and put us in his body. so that we can give praise and glory unto him. Knowing God's will as a disciple now, hearing his word, we are pressed and moved that it be accomplished in us. We 
with these words spoken by God, it is a motivation. It causes us to continue to move forward and to achieve and succeed the things of which God has a deem for us to fulfill. Galatians 4 and 19. Let us look at this. It says that my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. The Apostle Paul, uh, looking at the people of God and seeing their lack of sense of who they are, it's almost as if there's a rebirth of God's purpose in their lives as if it's been to some degree lost and he is saying little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, until he come alive again in you, that you can enjoy a fullness of God that he has ordained and intended for you to have. Now Ephesians 3, 14. For this cause, the Apostle Paul is saying that I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ as the man of God. Want us to know that this is one way to stay in touch with God and to know what is his will for each of us to bow on our knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you according unto the riches of his glory. Prayers being offered for us as we are encouraged to pray for one another that we keep reaching, keep praying. They ought to be in our hearts and our mind as a unity for each other that you and I will be on the same page in life, purpose, in achieving and succeeding want us to be united, praying ye one for another, moving under and with God, the power of the Holy Ghost. Verse 16, once again, that we would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might 
by his spirit in the inner man, strengthened with might, strengthened. Saints, you have more strength than we can imagine. We have the Lord. And the scripture says that he that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. God has given us power over the adversary so that we can finish the purpose of which he has given unto us. And verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. It's going to be by faith, believing, because the enemy wants to take everything God has given us. He has given us everything we need to achieve and succeed. And verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your heart so by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. If the fullness of Christ is going to ever be manifested in us, it's necessary for us to be rooted and grounded in love. Verse 18 says, may be able to comprehend with all saints, that is, the breadth, the length, and the depths, and the height that we are to enjoy the fullness of Christ. He wishes us to achieve. If we're going to be his second self in this period of time, Jesus Christ wants to be seen in the world, and he is going to be seen through you and me. He's going to be seen through the church who is in his body. We are part of him. That's why we must be careful as to what we do or say because we are his ambassador, his representative. We are his purchased off of the slave market to represent him. So at the church, the body of Christ, is where people get to see the Lord and get to know how to live for him. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that we might be filled with all of the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I say to the saints of God, the day that God filled you with his Holy Spirit, he came into you 
in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless us to internalize this, to believe this, to trust him for what the word says. He has spoken. And our whole being should be saying amen to God's truth, God's word. He who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. What is he saying to us? If you can believe it, it will come to pass. He declared himself to be Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the Sovereign One. May the Lord bless us to see that we are his second self. We are the church. United. According to the word of God. He cannot be divided. We are one. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you and keep you. May he bless you to know that you are more than a conqueror. You got the victory, daughter, son. You got the victory. I say it again. You have the victory over all of the evil spirits that Satan is trying to feed you. You have the victory. May the Lord bless you to embrace it, see it, and not give up on it. In the name that is above every name, Lord Jesus Christ, until we meet again on social media, or in presence somewhere else, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, keep you. His face shine upon you, gracious unto you, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Until next time. Amen. And amen. Amen.